What's up everybody, Afro Joe here, doing a video, keeping it real, and it's funny that I'm doing this video on my birthday, happy birthday to Afro Joe, yay, <clears throat> and uh, and I noticed I've been sitting there on YouTube for a while, and I've been watching some of the Tom and Sayota's videos, not, not, not like his videos, and I don't, I'm going to say this, I don't agree with everything he says, but some of the things he say I kind of agree with, and and I tell you this, the reason why I say some of the things I some of the things he say I agree with is because he's talking about the black community on how the black community is acting now and how they making themselves look foolish. Like I did a video, uh, what was it, last year or year before that about how the black entertainment versus the white entertainment, how in the black entertainment they call each other in the black entertainment they call each other sellouts, like how Spike Lee is calling Tyler Perry a sellout because Tyler Perry wears the dress and Tyler Perry is saying that he needs to leave him the hell alone and go to hell. And and I look at us like Thomas Sayota kind of reminds me of somebody. It's like I say the first person he came to mind is when I started listening to Thomas Sayota is Dr. Umar Johnson. Now if you don't know who Dr. Umar Johnson he's a, a doctor that actually tests kids on to see if they belong in special ed or not and I started listening to Thomas Ayota now I mean Dr. Dr. Umar Johnson same time as I've been listening to Public Enemy Professor Griff because I've been paying attention to what he says same as when I pay attention to Dick Gregory or Paul Moody because I look at these guys man I'm sitting up here it's like these guys are actually speaking the truth about what they're saying about the black community. Why are we acting? Why is the black community acting out so much? In the post, like, why does it always got to be black people? This has got to be the gang members. This has got to be the thugs. This has got to be the pimps. It's got to be the hoes. And if they're in school, they drop out or they set in a goal where the only goals is in life is where they got to be an athlete or a rapper or a singer and it seems like that's the only choices that these that the black youth makes in today's society. Oh, I wanna be a rapper, I wanna be a singer, I wanna be a basketball player, I wanna be a football player. It's like now remember something that Doctor um, Doctor Umar said Doctor Umar Johnson said was about the movie Coach Carter. He's like there's something that Coach Carter said. It's like I don't want the kids to think that the only thing they're going to achieve is being a basketball player, thinking they're going to get in the NBA. Because the parents are always telling them, my child's going to be in the NBA, the NFL, or baseball league, or something like that, because that's what parents, the black parents want, is the child to be to make it into being as being an athlete. Now, I'm saying, you know what? I think he's right. I think he's right. And I'm sitting up there and I'm watching watching these guys videos and I was like man these guys are actually making a valid good point in the black community talking about how in the black community that's all it is that that when you look at the black kids out of out of out in these schools like they hardly don't want to go to college they drop out of school they want to join these gangs they want to be gangbangers and then they sit there and say Oh, I have no choice but to join a gang just to survive. It's like you can do more than that than, than selling drugs, pimping out women, jo joining a gang, and selling drugs or killing somebody for something so petty. And like I said, like like I said, I I've been watching some of Tommy Sayota's videos and I, some of the stories he says to, that I pay attention to is like it's always about black people committing the wrong crime. Black people are killing somebody over something so petty that you hardly ever see white people do. Like, you, you, you kind of see white people drinking John and killing somebody or kidnapping somebody's kids. And as far as it goes, but when you see a black story, when you see something that a black person did, it's always about gang, gang violence, theft, drugs or it's something like that and I kind of was like you know what I, was like, I agree with what you're saying it's not it's not the 
peep that grows it's like it's 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 their fault. Yeah, it's it's the person's fault, it's the black it's the person's fault that commits these crimes. But you gotta look where do they learn this. It's the parent it starts with the parents. Like the parents don't wanna teach their kids to be, do the right thing. They teach their kids by abusing them by calling them stupid or verbal abuse and they don't want to teach them nothing. They want to teach them how to live in the streets. You can't teach your kids to live in the streets. To me, when I look at it, it's like your kids got to have street smarts and book smarts. The reason why I say your kids got to have street smarts and book smarts is because you want your kids to know something, have an education. That's why I say they got to have book smarts because they want to have because uh, you want your kids to have book smarts, to have for education, to know what they want to be in life. They got to have street smarts because they got to know how to protect themselves and know what to do when they're out in the streets, out in public. And that's how it is. It's the same what Dr. Umar Johnson's been saying. Your kids got to have an education. Stop sitting there letting the TV babysit your kids. Same with Professor Griff. He's saying the same thing. Don't let your kids be babysit by music and by TV because it's going to do nothing but mess up their mind. Thinking that thug living is something something good. Now, now you may know Professor Grill from the group called Public Enemy. I used to listen to Public Enemy. And I remember the song they did was Fight the Power. You got to fight the power too. That's what I mean. When they te when they were sitting up there, they was doing music that says, "Don't let them judge you." But it's it's like what Dr. Umar Johnson. Don't let them judge you before they get to know you. When you let them judge you before before they get to know you, then it puts you in a position where that's all people are gonna do is judge you before they know you. It's the same with Dick Gregory sitting there saying, look at all these black kids. They let the lives get ruined because they want to run the streets. Same with Paul Moody. Now, you may know seeing Paul Moody in the Dave Chappelle show playing Nick Adamas. And he's worked with Richard Pryor, wrote skits, wrote jokes for Richard Pryor. You may see Dick Gregory. He's a comedian and an activist. You may see him on the episode of Reno 911 playing the old blind man. Or you may see him doing stand up on the Martin Lawrence stand up on Showtime sometime. And you may see him at the Trayvon Martin rallies. And you see all these men saying the same thing over and over again about the black community that we need to wake up and realize something. You're not teaching your kids to do the right thing. You're not let teaching them like you can do be somebody. You can be a better than the you can be better than the people who gangbang, sell drugs, pimp, prostitute, kills and all this and that. You can be better than that. How come you don't hardly see more black doctors, more black judges, more black lawyers, more black scientists, more black astronauts, more black Jobs, more black people in different job positions. You don't see more black ki black kids with college education. You hardly ever see. You starting to see a few years ago. You starting to see black kids dropping out of school for what? Oh man, my life is so messed up, man. High school is a waste of time. High school is a waste of time. How was high school? How was high school a waste of time? You're getting an education. You're getting an education. And it just it just you getting an education to better yourself. You get you getting an education to better yourself. And then you sit up here and you do these petty ass little things. You, 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 you want to be somebody. It's like what, like 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 Whoopi Go like Whoopi Goldberg said in uh, Sister Act Two. If you want to be somebody, if you want to go somewhere, you gotta wake up and pay attention. And that's what black folks need to do. And 
today society's like I remember a movie that uh, Spike Lee did and actually and, and, and actually and actually when I watched it I said like, that's why so many minorities judge us it's because what they do on TV and what they do in movies and what they do on in music like in, in the movie Bamboozle it talks about how black people are the new black face you're probably wondering what the fuck you talking about Afro Joe black people are the new black face like go rent the movie go buy the movie Bamboozle that Spike Lee did and you will see what I mean what it means is this Bamboozle and they say black people are the new black face is it's like this <clears throat> Back in the day, back in the way with the 30s and 40s, back when before TV ever came out, white folks used to make fun of black people. They used to sit there and make fun of black people when TV came out and it was in black and white. White people used to take black makeup and smother it on their face and put on red lipstick and still poke fun at black folks. So white folks will poke fun at black people by putting on blackface. And when, when, when but when Spike Lee did that movie Bamboozle showing hey black people are the new blackface when they sit there and they play these parts in these movies where they gotta play a thug, when they gotta play a drug dealer, when they gotta play a pimp, when they gotta play a hoe, when they gotta play a prostitute well a hoe is a prostitute when they gotta play these parts, all these parts. Now you look at Ice T, and you see him in New Jack City. What's he playing? He's playing a cop. When you see Ice T on Law and Order SVU, he's playing what? A cop. So he ain't black facing himself and saying a black person can be a police officer. A black person can can be a police officer. When you look at Obama, you see a black man, well actually a biracial man, people need to quit saying it, he's black, but when you see Obama, he's the president of the United States, it shows that a colored man can be president. Giving the chance, I think when you see Obama, when Obama won the election and became president, I know it was, I know he was put in White House, in the well, it's a different story about how I'm going to But when you see Obama, that should have inspired, inspired black kids to understand that, hey, you can become president too. You can be anything you want in life. And that's one thing these guys are trying to say about black, about black people, about black kids. Especially when you look at Tommy Sayota and people say, oh, he's Uncle Tom, he's Uncle Ruckus. If you ever seen Boondocks, there's a character on there named Uncle Ruckus. Not the fucking movies, not Boondocks the movie. I'm talking about Boondocks the animated series where it's a grandfather taking care of his grandsons and there's a black character named Uncle Ruckus. He hates black people even though he's black and in the ace of spades. But he loves white people, and that's what the term. Well, he said in one video, he said, "Well, they call people Uncle Ruckus." But to, when I look at Thomas say, "Oh, that's like, why do people? Why do black people act so ignorant?" It's the same. It's like, why do people? Why do black people always end up on that show, Cops? Why do black people always end up on that show, America's Most Wanted? Why does pe black people always commit crimes? And that's why people are like. People are stereotyping the black black societies, black culture, and black and black people because in the black community they are sitting there and giving into the stereotypes, giving it to stereotypes. When I say they're giving it to stereotypes, I mean like, oh man, you know black folks love to ride people. You know they love white women. You know they love the coolie, the great coolie. You know they love smoking menthol cigarettes. You know they love smoking the new posts. 
You know, they love this and that because they're giving it to the stereotype. They don't want to change the stereotype. It's the same with white folks. They're giving the stereotype. Now, you probably say, what you mean white folks giving the stereotype? If you ever watch Honey Boo Boo Chow, <laughs> that's a good prime example where white folks are getting stereotypes straight off the back. If you look at Honey Boo Boo Chow. That's yeah, stereotyping white folks. Same when you watch The Wire. The Wire. Or not, yeah, something like that. Yeah, The Wire. Or, yeah, shit like that. Or when you watch Boys in the Hood. Or when you watch Friday. Well, I actually like Friday. But when you, like, I like I actually like the movie Fridays. All the Friday movies. But it's, it's, it's those examples to show, hey, black people giving it to, to, giving it to stereotypes. And you get all these guys saying black folks need to wake up and realize. And you, like, for real, I've, I've actually, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. I actually sat there one of some of the uh, Paul Moody stand up act, and he talks about black people. It's like, he talks about whites and blacks, but he looks at white people and say, Y'all ain't got nothing to worry about because your skin color. Y'all got the collection to protection. Something like collection of the protection. Something like protection of the collection. Something like that. He said something like it. And I look at it and I say, you know, he's kind of right about the black community. He's poking in front of, but he's actually telling the truth. Same with Dick Gregory. He's a comedian and an activist, but he's telling the truth. Same with Professor Griff. But back to Tommy Sayota, he I'm sitting here and I'm watching these videos and I'm saying like, this brother's got a point. It's not just the mothers, it's also the fathers. He might say, it's the mothers that doesn't raise the kids right. So if it's a single mother, yeah. But in Dr. Umar Johnson, he's not just saying it, it's the mother's fault. He's saying it's the father's fault too. He's saying it's both parents in this situation. Like, I'm telling y'all, <clears throat> I'm telling y'all, go, like, for real, go look up Dr. Umar Johnson, some of the videos he did, and he talks about that, and saying with the, uh, Tommy Sayota, because you post it and you think, oh, man, this guy's actually proving the point. Same with Professor Griff, Paul Moody, or Dick Gregory. And this idea is, I'm not trying to compare Dr. Tommy Sayota to Dr. Umar Johnson, but I'm saying he's making the same kind of points as Dr. Umar Johnson. But not every point, but some points that he's making about the black community. I'm not hating on Tommy Sayota. I'm not hating on Dr. Umar Johnson, but all I'm saying is they making a valid good point valid good point on the black community like black people can do better than what they're doing now they don't have now, now the guy that made FUBU everybody remember FUBU look where he's at now he's on that show called Shark Tank the guy that made it FUBU he's on what Shark Tank now that's a successful brother he made FUBU, now he's on the ABC show. Come on now. Like I said, man, black folks can do better. Black folks can do better. See, you see all these people that I'm flashing up. They can't, well actually, Thomas Sayota, I ain't seen, like, I ain't trying to be mean to Thomas Sayota, but I ain't never seen him in a movie. I ain't never seen him on a TV show, but I believe I agree with half the things he said. But you see, Dr. Umar Johnson, Dick Gregory, Paul Moody, Professor Grill, you see, they came successful. Dr. Umar Johnson's got a degree. Uh, Dick Gregory marched with Martin Luther King and became a comedian and activist. Paul Moody worked with uh, Dave Chappelle and Richard Pryor. Professor Griff has been in the me since the late 80s early 90s with the public enemy and you look at it and it's like these people made something of themselves and they want to teach they trying to, it seems like they trying to teach the black community that you need to stop 
giving in to stereotype but stop like like they say like uh public enemy used to say don't believe the hype don't believe the hype and that's what black folks are doing they giving in to the hype they giving in to the hype no why are they doing i say i don't know why they doing it but that's what they doing they giving in to the hype if they wasn't giving in to the hype then you wouldn't see black gang bangers like I know black folks ain't the only people that game bang, but you know what I mean. Like you wanna see black folks being game banging, pimping and hoeing and selling drugs or killing young black kids. They 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 would have tried to set an example. It's like you need to do better than me. Don't be like me. Do better than me. That's one thing I tell my nieces, don't be like me, be better than me. Have that education. Make something of yourself. Go to college, get that degree, and get you a good job. Being, but there's going to be people, well, Afro Joe, it's not that easy. It's not going to be that easy. I ain't saying it was going to be easy. I'm, I'm saying it, it's not going to be easy, but you need, to, but the black community needs to stop giving in to that fucking temptation. It's like it's uh, it's like them like like I said about the movies like Friday and uh, Boys in the Hood, Training Day. It's like some shit like that. It's like you gotta look at it, it's like is it art imitating life or is it life imitating art? And it makes you question. And then you see all these brothers sitting up here talking about I'm proud to be black, but I'm not proud of my people. And that's what they look at and say, I'm proud to be black, but I'm not proud of, of my people. And the reason why I'm not proud of my people, because they giving into that hype. They giving into the bullshit. And that's all it is, man. Like, I'm half black, and I'm sitting there, I was like, why do black people only think that, like, you look at black kids, and you say, why do they think only being a basketball player, football player, or rapper, singer is the only choices they have in life? If they graduate from high school, why do they think that those jobs are the only things they can get? Same with gang banging, being a thug, or selling drugs, or killing babies, killing kids, pimping out women, and or selling drugs to their people. It's like you gotta question this shit. I'm not putting down black folks, but it makes me question black folks. Oh, I grew up in the ghetto. There was a lot of people that became successful that grew up in the ghetto. They grew up. It, that's how it is. You see, a lot of people, black people that grew up in the ghetto, they became very successful. They became very successful in these site. And they, they, they go back and visit, but they don't want to live their life. That yeah, I came from the ghetto, but I just don't want to go back to the ghetto. I go visit, but I just don't want to go back to it. Like, I got out of there for a reason, because I got tired of selling. I got tired of being around drug dealers, pimps, game baggers, and all that shit. Like, he, even Afro Man, he said in one of his songs, he grew up with, like, gang bangers killing each other for crack. Now, for something like for rap selling rock coke can each other for rap selling rock cocaine on my doorstep how the ball of bounce plus a bike to ride but my mama didn't let me play outside see what I'm saying he said he, when he grew up in the ghetto and it's just in that song he's saying he grew up in this way when right back in the days when rappers was telling their life stories they were saying I grew up in the ghetto this is what happened they didn't say, I want you to be in the ghetto and thinking, oh, this is what you can do. They said, this is what I've been through. Don't be like me. Be better than that. And that's what I, that's what I kind of think about this. Think about it. It's like, this is get carrying on uh, every day about the black community. It's like, this is what's happening. Like I said, <laughs> that's why I say some of the things, I give props to Tommy Sayota. I wouldn't call him a sellout. I wouldn't call him a Uncle Ruckus, as people want to say. I I just I I want to sit there and say this brother is actually putting it out there, saying, "Hey man, we can do better. 
we can do better same with the rest of the, the guys that you've seen in this video we can do better they selling they they telling you we can do better we don't have to be the people that's been stereotyped we don't have to be the ghetto people that only that sells drugs or pimps and all this and that I said we can do better than that than sit up here and we can do better than that instead of sitting up here thinking that that's the only things that a black person can do is sell drugs, pimp, gang bang, so on and so forth. We can do better than that and that's what these guys are trying to tell y tell y'all. And it seems like it doesn't want to work because like I ain't saying all black folks, but some black folks want to sit there and cuss them out. Y'all wrong, y'all stupid, y'all ignorant. I'm going to do what the fuck I want. If I want to sell my ass, I'll sell my ass. That's what some of the people want to say and do. If I want to sell my ass, I'll sell my ass. What the fuck ever. And that's how it is. And it, and it just, the shit that, some of the black folks, like, you look at Nick Cannon. He he said he grew up in the ghetto, right? Look where he's at now. Married to Mariah Carey, got two kids, and he's got a great show, Wildin' Out. Been host of America's Got Talent. America's Got Talent. You don't never seen this dude. Yeah, I live in the ghetto. I got all this money. You know why? Because I've been pimping out some hoes, selling some jugs in my ass. When you brag about that in your music, if you're a rapper and you brag about that, say, yeah, I'm a rapper, I sell drugs, I pimp women. It's trying to be like, like, well, one thing, you look at Rick Ross. He's saying he's got all this, but, hey, that motherfucker's been playing people. He think he badass Billy Gun because he's got a record deal. It's like, yeah, this is your gimmick. If you ever get a record deal and come some famous rapper, don't sit up and, and make pimping women being a gangbanger, being a thug, selling drugs, shooting young kids, your fucking gimmick. Make something else. Make it that your rap, that the rap game is your gimmick. Make it where I used to live it. Like, be like what Afro Man did. So I used to live in the ghetto. Look at me now. I used to do this when I was a kid. Back in the day. No, it's like, I used to see this in my neighborhood. But look at me now. I live in the big in a nice neighborhood. Like Dick Gregory said. I remember what Dick Gregory said. It really made me laugh. But it was true. It's like if I got money. And I live in the suburbs. Why do I want to. Leave the suburbs. Go break in in the ghetto. Then go back to the suburbs. Because I just robbed somebody in the ghetto. Why would you want to do that. It made me think about it. It's something like that. Something on the line like that. But I can't quote him on that. But something like that. And you got all these people sitting up here telling us like black folks are, need to realize what the fuck they're doing. Tell me, uh, Dr. Umar Johnson talking about, not not to put black folks down, said that black kids are being put in special ed or, or special classes because of what black parents don't want to realize that the kids don't have a problem. It's just the parenting skills are not there because the parents don't want to be a parent. Same with Tommy Sayola. He says the same thing. Parents don't want to be parents. They want to be lazy ass bums. And that's all he's saying. Tommy Sayola and Dr. Umar Johnson are saying the same thing. They don't want to be parents. They they want to be. I ain't calling them these two men bad parents, but they're saying these parents don't want to be parents. They want to be lazy ass people. They don't want to teach their kids from right from wrong. That's why the kids are going out doing the wrong things because that's how it is. And I agree with them, man. I, I just can't lie and deny and say, well, they're they're wrong. But ladies and gentlemen, I just have to say this. Even, like I said, it's my birthday. Happy birthday to me. And this has been Afro Joe. Follow me on Twitter at Afro Joe the Wookiee. Subscribe to my channel, Silo Jr. too. Follow me on uh, Tumblr and holler at me when you can. Thank y'all. But like I said, they just trying to do the right thing. You question, why do black folks give in to the hype, give in to temptation, give in to the stereotypes? If you, if you, because one thing is the black community, black people need to break from that stereotype bullshit instead of making it true, making it to lies. That's how it is. Black folks don't need to make the stereotypes true. 
Like that guy uh, that played Arliss, that show on Arliss, Michael Ball, or something like that. It says, when the legends become the facts, print the legends. And that's true. When the legends becomes the facts, print the legends. And every legend is not true. And that's how it is. Now, this, like I said, this has been Afro Joe. Holler at me. Peace, love, and please do the right thing. Holler at me.